Before seeing the students' efforts, let's remind ourselves how political party advertising in New Zealand has changed over the decades. The National Party covers the country as a whole. This National Party ad, when Jack Marshall was Prime Minister and Rob Muldoon as Deputy, shows you just how dull political ads used to be. Man for man, the strongest team. Both national. But Bob Harvey's groundbreaking Labour ad of 72 changed all that. Split screen, a song and a vision made things happen for Big Norm Kirk. Make things happen. It's your turn now to make things happen. Annuation scheme isn't just the Nats, not wishing to be upstaged again in 75, hardened things up, famously linking communism and Cossacks to Labour's superannuation plans. They say they've only just begun. The controversy over the Cossacks had just begun, which may be why Labour's 78 campaign dripped with inclusivity. But it didn't get Bill Rowling into power. Muldoon's We're Keeping Our Word campaign won the day. The ballots on compulsory versus voluntary unionism are being held. The highlight looking back, undoubtedly Winston, playing journalist, asking the hard questions. Mr Muldoon. Would you explain the new industrial law? Well, the Labour government took all the penalties out of the industrial law. The police are steadily losing the war against crime. By 1987, National, under Jim Bolger, had introduced a new level of drama to their ads. On August 15th, let's get New Zealand right. Vote National. But David Longy was running the show by then, and even this fairly stodgy Labour ad and another schmaltzy song couldn't hold him back from a second term in power. The new Labour government, bringing New Zealand together. From the late 80s, television remained the centre of political advertising till last election, when suddenly the focus flicked from the screen to the billboard. And that's the way it seems set for this year's election. On April Fool's Day, the Labour government started a compulsory superannuation scheme and called it a bold piece of social legislation. It wasn't even a very funny joke. What they didn't tell you was that nobody would get its full benefit until the year 2028. If you're one of New Zealand's half million housewives, you don't get anything, ever. The same goes for the 500,000 people over 55 and the 400,000 on Social Security. But the superannuation scheme isn't just one of Labour's bad ideas. It's also a dangerous one. Shortly, Labour will be taking millions out of our pay packets each week and spending it. In just seven years, they'll have enough money to buy every share in every public company in New Zealand. Soon, they could buy all the farms. Indeed, one day, the government could wind up owning literally everything. And you know what that's called, don't you? Fed up with being railroaded into the gloom and left in the dark by successive governments, bewildered about your future employment, security and well-being, You've been handed a line with many faulty points. You deserve prosperity, quality of life and confidence in your future. You need to get out of the tunnel and to see the light. Social Credit New Zealand will signal the change that gives you the ticket to assured jobs, low mortgage interest rates, law and order, lower and fairer taxes, early superannuation, a better health service. Social Credit New Zealand, way to go. Jim Bolger's promises run into millions, millions and millions. But can he keep his promises? Ruth Richardson doesn't know how. 
this memo, she doesn't know where National will get the money. Jim Bolger's promising things his own finance person hasn't explained. If Ruth's questioning Jim, shouldn't you? Six years ago, Jack was a skilled builder. Things were looking up. But after two terms of Labour government, his world has turned upside down. Jack is one of almost 200,000 New Zealanders who are out of a job. Today, he feels little better than a beggar. But this Saturday, Jack's going to get a chance to do something about it. First tonight, history in the making. More than two million New Zealanders went to the polling booths today for our first MMP election. In less than one hour, the polls close and counting begins. The Decision 96 team is standing by to follow progress from 7 o'clock, but right now... At the end of the day, the first past the post system has, in recent years, finally delivered. It's bailed us out of the hole we dug for ourselves 20 or 30 years ago, and we are now one of the best performing economies in the Western world. You say the economy would go down the gurgler if we got MMP? It would put enormous stresses and strains and put the achievements of the last four or five years at risk. Without okay, a question. Steve Murray, is that true? Peter Shirtcliffe set up a campaign office through which the business community could fund major advertising to oppose MMP. We believe voting for MMP is gambling with our country's future. Our children could pay the price. Is it a risk we can afford? Tick the top box. Reject MMP. The Electoral Reform Coalition, on the other hand, had a vast um, body of people and built up networks of activists through allied organisations and, um, and sort of spread that network out so that um, you know, we found people in every little, in, in places like Takaka and Kaikoura and Lumsden and, you know, we thought who knows who knows who and educated them about what MMP was about. What we're wanting is a system where every vote counts equally and that pressure groups can't go and tap on the shoulder of their favourite cabinet minister and get what they want and that's what they stand to lose with MMP. But what's fairer and simpler? The one person, one vote. What, in, what is fairer and simpler is one person with a vote that counts no matter where they live and parties getting seats in Parliament in proportion to their level of support throughout the community. That's the difference. In the last week before the referendum, Peter Shirtcliffe's campaign spent more on advertising than the Labour and National parties together. 21 extra MPs will cost us millions of dollars every year. Enough is enough. Tick the top box. Reject MMP. Maybe it was when, as a National Party minister, he criticised his own party for breaking their promises to the elderly. Maybe it was when he went back to Tauranga to win a by-election, when he left the National Party. Maybe it was when the Māori people came to the Beehive to support him when he was fired by Jim Bolger as their minister. Maybe it was when, with hundreds of thousands of forgotten New Zealanders, he formed a new political vehicle to keep the two old parties honest. Or maybe it was when he won the wine box after an eight-year struggle for accountability and won law for all on behalf of the New Zealand taxpayer. Who can say for sure when it was he became a leader? But Winston Peters is the man to lead New Zealand into the next century. He has the leadership qualities. He listens to the people, and most of all, he's prepared to make the financial and personal sacrifices required to make New Zealand great again. Well, Winston Peters, from where we sit, from the rest, where the rest of us sit, 
it looks to have been a pretty bruising experience. Uh, you've got other options, you've never exercised them. Why choose to go back into the, into the maelstrom again? Why choose to go back to the political arena another time? Well, it has been a bruising experience, but that's no reason to give up. Uh, we've had many battles, uh, many of which we've won, and they've been on important issues which are fundamental to this country. We have a long way to go to turn this country around, and I think it's important that there be a party in the middle of people who are practical, who are not blindly ideological, who've got plain common sense which used to make this country a great country in economic and political and social terms, to stay there and ensure that that sort of influence it takes us into the 21st century. Could be a numbers game again then, do you think? Well, maybe, but again, we've learned from our experience. And New Zealand First starts this campaign with the view that we will stay on the crossbenches and vote on the issues uh, as they come up, on their merits, from wherever they might come in the House or wherever they might come from within the country. What government's doing is being a serious partner. We believe in looking after the many, not just the few. Officers, we really appreciate you treating our flag with respect. We're going to fight like hell to keep that gun. We're not going to run because things get hot. We can take pride in having been part of making it happen. Being a student, you're not only helping your future, you're helping New Zealand's future. So we think it's only fair that we help you. From next year, under a Labour government, when you pay off your student loan, you won't have to pay any interest. Give your party vote to Labour. A richer New Zealand has a clean green economy that works for everyone. Clean rivers, thriving kids and green jobs. You can make it happen. We can make it happen. Party, party vote, vote green. green. Hello and welcome to the Internet Party. I'm glad to see you here. My name is Kim.com and I'm here to introduce you to a new political party that New Zealand really needs. We need to be strong in the digital economy. We need to protect our privacy rights from intrusions by the government. And we need to fight for a free and open Internet. Kim, I agree. Privacy and Internet freedom are paramount for our digital future. We want to expand the country's internet connectivity. We want to lower the bandwidth prices for users. And we want to make sure that New Zealand becomes a hub for internet businesses, where they can thrive and create new jobs. Politicians are so disconnected from the people today. The government is taking over our lives and is taking more and more power. It's time to switch democracy back on and make your voice heard. Join the Internet Party today and let's make New Zealand the best it can be together. Nobody said it would be easy. But through your hard work and the National Party's economic management, New Zealand is heading in the right direction. Right now, our economy is growing faster than Australia and 28 other OECD countries. This election, the choice is simple stay on course to prosperity, or risk it all on who knows what direction. Keep the team that's working. National. Working for New Zealand.